Wait and I'll tell you today how clinics shrug it off when you suggest body grafts. Hello, I'm Dr. Tejinder Bhatti, a plastic surgeon specializing in advanced hair restoration techniques, my DHX hair transplant restoration technique. Over the past 25 years, I have experienced a seismic shift. Patients are seeking solutions for their hair loss younger, with more severe hair loss and harder demands. Today, I want to address what I believe is the industry's greatest missed opportunity. and how this missed opportunity is harming your future hair restoration options. Modern clinics, especially the large volume hair mills, and we have them all over the world these days, have simplified hair transplantation into a scalp only business model. It is straightforward, it is fast, and it's profitable. But this comes at a cost. Irreversible overharvesting, Overharvesting of the scalp donor which can devastate a patient's ability to undergo future hair transplantations as baldness progresses. But this practice is often tied in revenue models, not patient welfare. In contrast, the Darling Buds DHX technique, which I personally champion, places donor preservation at its very core. DHX ensures that we only harvest what's absolutely necessary, conserving scalp reserves for future intervention as baldness progresses. Every graft is harvested thoughtfully, sustainably, just as a responsible miner wouldn't destroy the entire mountain. A committed hair transplant surgeon should preserve the scalp donor's reserve for long-term benefit. And that's just what the DHX technique embodies, ensuring that we harvest wisely, we harvest ethically, graft by graft. Now let's examine the data here. According to the 2022 ICHRS practice census, approximately 93% of the grafts harvested the world over came from the scalp donor. A massive imbalance with only 5% grafts coming from the beard donor and just 1.2% grafts coming from the chest donor. figures were the same in 2020, 92.5% scalp, 7.5% beard and 2.4% chest. Whereas at my clinic, Darling Birds Clinic, and my data could be biased as well because I get mostly extensive baldness cases who have large areas to cover with meager donor supplies. In my clinic, the scalp to beard to chest ratio is 2 is to 1 is to 0.5. But these numbers do not reflect what's clinically necessary. They only reflect what most clinics choose to avoid, choosing convenience and financial incentive structures over scientific integrity, unfortunately. Clinics avoid body hair because it's harder to extract and requires far greater surgical expertise. And the most important point why clinics do not do BHT and the fact is hidden from you is that the doctor does not do the procedure. They are merely optimizing for revenue, not long-term results. Ask them to show long-term results. Revenue first clinics are like treasure hunters who grab the easiest gems lying on the surface. They maximize profit in the short term, but leave the deeper, more enduring deposits untouched. BHT or body hair transplant offers a robust scientific alternative. Beard grafts demonstrate a 95% survival rate at one year with excellent growth blending into scalp regions. On the other hand, chest and torso grafts show around 76 to 80% of survival over one year. Body hair is 100% resistant to DHT, unlike even the so-called permanent safe zone of the scalp donor. And this makes it a biological safeguard if patients at a later date discontinue DHT blockers like finasteride. Studies confirm that transplanted body grafts under recipient influence in their new scalp environment grow longer and blend well with existing hair. Given this evidence, relying solely on scalp donor, especially in extensive cases of baldness like Norwood 6, Norwood 7, is not simply lazy, it's indefensible. Every patient deserves enduring, future-proof results. BHT, when done correctly, extends donor capacity and preserves options for the long haul. But in my clinic, I not only believe in BHT, it's my ethical commitment. I personally perform each procedure, do only one case in a day, 
Use my advanced kinetic FUE technique, DHX, keeping transaction rates lower than 1%. I never delegate the surgical steps to technicians. Every graft's origin is tracked and explained to the patient, endorsed in his discharge notes. And now let me share a few scenarios. Just click on the playlist above to go to my collection of body hair transplant results. And you will see young, aggressive balders, even up to Norwood 6 and Norwood 7. Young men in their mid-20s, some resistant to DHT blockers, presenting with donor depleted scalp, in which I have integrated beard grafts with scalp grafts, preserving scalp reserves and securing long-term viability, even if medications are later discontinued. In the same playlist, you will also come across patients who have had prior scalp-only hair transplants and since they are now Norwood 6, have to rely majorly on beard grafts and chest grafts. This BHT extension delays and sometimes totally eliminates the need for scalp reharvest in advanced cases. And then there are those who never started finasteride at all and express future reluctance to take finasteride. Body hair in such cases offers native DHT resistant follicles, essentially future proofing restoration. And these aren't hypotheticals. They are some of my many real cases demonstrating how BHT empowers us to deliver scientifically sound, sustainable strategies in surgical hair restoration. And now watch my long term results here. Ask any other clinic for their long term results and watch their facial expression. So then you may ask me, why does everybody else not adopt BHT? Because it is technically demanding. For body follicles have varied angles, tiny depth differences and diverse textures. And the process is time consuming. It needs extra planning, extra dissection, longer harvesting protocols. And then it's financially less rewarding, though infinitely much more valuable in the long term. And that's why many clinics the world over shun body hair transplants. But if surgeons prioritize patient outcomes and future integrity, not quarterly profits, body hair can constantly deliver outstanding results with BHT. When incorporating BHT, my practice entails number one, patient suitability. Ideal candidates are Norwood 6, Norwood 7, sometimes Norwood 5 donor depleted patients or those unwilling to take medications as advised. Meticulous planning goes into BHT. Donor zones have to be mapped, beard for mid scalp, chest for crown and limbs for texture blends. I use the cold kinetic FUE technique, microscopic dissection, tumescent anesthesia, achieving transaction rates less than 1 to 2% and then transparency. I explain the characteristics, the growth rate, the length, the curl and maturation timeline over 9 to 12 months. Ethical accountability is prime at my clinic. I perform all the procedures myself. I do only one case in a day. No technician outsourcing. No hidden contributors. I meticulously document each and every graft that is harvested. From where it is harvested, where it is placed, recording hair counts per graft, placement zones, and many other essential parameters that I can return to any time in the distant future when baldness progresses. DHX is more than a technique. It's a humongous philosophical shift. We need to evolve from speed first to science first. Clinics must stop celebrating scalp only workflows and start treating BHT as standard practice, particularly in aggressive early onset or medically restricted cases. But replacing outdated norms and business interests isn't easy. It requires surgeons to invest in training, equipment and ethical responsibility. And this is hard when you use technicians to do your procedures for you. But the reward is profound. Donor preserving, future ready, patient centered care. After all, body hair along with scalp hair is today's standard of care in the best clinics. Body hair transplant is not just an option. It's a legacy of integrity, foresight and patient first restoration. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions about hair loss treatment for men and women, about hair transplants, about body hair transplants, or you want to know anything else concerning hair, do leave a comment in the comment section below and do subscribe. Have a nice day and God bless you.